Grace, peace, mercy, and love to all of you from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning, everyone. What a great way to open up worship. I, I liked that. That was a great audible and then change the play again back at the line to, to call, go back to doing the song because it was beautiful. I think we should start every worship with an a cappella song like that and sing in harmony together. What's ironic about uh, today, and, and uh, Pastor Phil had his vacation last week. We had spoken many months ago about me speaking today, and many months ago, I had said I was looking forward to having a message because I wanted to do a message on forgiveness. And ironically, it was sometime in May when Pastor had told me that he was going to be doing a leadership series on lessons in courage, and it was going to be based on the teachings from the book of Matthew. And the reading, as you all heard, is Matthew chapter 6. And I said, you know, we couldn't have planned it better that way, that the Spirit's telling me one thing and the Spirit's telling him another thing, and it was the same thing. All glory to God, all glory to our Father. And being that it is July 9th, anybody who's sitting in this room, I know that you are a devoted Christian because you don't just come to church on July 9th unless you are a true believer in faith. You understand the scripture, you understand the word, and you're here because you want the message. You're here because you want to receive the blessing. You're here because you want to worship your Lord because that's what we're supposed to do. So it's, it's ironic that we're here hearing this today, and then this is the message that we have. Now, Jesus, in this chapter here, as he reads Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 15, as Joe just read before, is the Lord's Prayer. And we all know the Lord's Prayer. And so just as like a, a review of the Lord's Prayer, Jesus is teaching us how we're supposed to pray. He's teaching us that when we pray to the Father, recognize, above all else, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, right? We're talking to the creator of the universe. We're talking to the giver of life. As Pastor said at the beginning here, you know, whatever we have going on pales in comparison to the greatness and the glory of God. So we start off by recognizing who we're speaking to and it gets ourselves ready for what's to come. The next part, he talks about your kingdom come, your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. And, and, and why do we pray for God's kingdom? We pray for God's kingdom because we know the lawlessness, the sinfulness, the insanity that is this world. And we know that his world, his kingdom is perfect. And so we pray for that to come above all else because our, ultimately every problem that we have has something to do with something in this world, Right? But when his kingdom comes, those problems will not exist. That's the ultimate answer to our prayer. So we ask for that above all else. And then why do we ask for his will to be done? Because is there anybody in this room who is perfect? Raise your hand. I didn't think so, right? So we don't know what's best for us. We think we do. We think we have a good head on our shoulders. And some of us have better heads on our shoulders than others. And that's okay. You're forgiven forgiveness, right? But God, his will be done. And when his will is done, that's the path of righteousness, right? It says it, and I'm going to actually re-reference this later on, but one of my favorite verses is Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6, where it says, in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your path, right? So doing what God tells us to do, he's going to make straight our path and things are going to be better for us. Then he talks about, give us this day our daily bread. This is where we ask for what we need, right? This is where we ask for our provisions. People are sick. People lost a job. People have passed away. Things that we need to help us through. Then he talks about, forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors, which I'm going to come back to in a minute because that's the purpose of today's message. And then last but not least, protect us from temptation. Protect us from evil. Now, these last two verses here in this section, for if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But 15, if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will, you, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Now, that's interesting, right? Because this is where it's, it's lessons in courage. Being able to forgive 
is sometimes a challenging thing, right? It's very, very hard for some of us to, to, to be able to forgive other people. Every single week in this series, and I'm thoroughly enjoying it, Pastor. It's been fantastic. I told you my favorite one of all of them was the Father's Day one because it was just like, come on, guys, man up. Let's do this, right? And, and live as, as God told us to. So I absolutely love that one. But every single week in this series, you've referenced the Beatitudes. And sure enough here, there is a Beatitude that talks about forgiveness. Does anybody know which one it is? Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy right? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Now, the reason why I wanted to do this series or this, this message specifically, I actually want to recognize my wife, Susan, because blessed are the merciful. Having mercy sometimes is very difficult for me. Sometimes it's hard when somebody wrongs you or somebody lets you down or you're relying on somebody and it doesn't come through. And over the years of our marriage, Susan has exemplified forgiveness better than any other person I have ever seen. She's forgiven me for more than I can even begin to count and share. But also, she has told me time and time again, Steve, let it go. Let it go. Stop holding the anxiety. Stop holding the grudge. Let it go. Forgive. Just let it go. It's okay. And it's taken... 14 glorious years, Susan. Thank you, right? But I'm starting to understand that. And, 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 I, and I come to Scripture because that's where my source is. And so, you know, what, what does Jesus say about forgiving other people? Well, you know, in, 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 the, in the same passage here, right, the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says that, talk about retaliation, but he says, I tell you, do not resist the one who is evil, but if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him then the other also. Right? So he's saying, you know, if somebody hurts you, turn and let it go and let them do it again. That's, that's not for you to deal with, right? Moving forward in the same passage here, he goes a little further on. He says, but I say to you, love your enemies. And then this next part, right? What does that say? And what? Pray for those who persecute you, right? So that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven, for he makes his sun rise on the evil and the good, and he sends his rain on the just and the unjust. But I like that part where he says, pray for those who persecute you. Love your enemies. That is hard to do. Now, now, now and there are certain circumstances where, where it seems easy to forgive, right? Uh, last year, my beloved children in the, in the room over here to the right, we, had, we went out to see, I think it was Thor, Love, and Thunder. And I know you guys will remember this specifically. I hope you will remember this specifically. Because after the movie was over, it had been a while of my children just being children, being out of school for a while, and, and they're kind of like running around and, and not appreciating what they have. And so after the movie, Susan had asked the kids, what did you think of the movie? And they it immediately started complaining about, I didn't get enough snacks, or I didn't get this or that or whatever. And I went on this whole, you guys remember this? I went on this whole lecture on the way home, how we're not going to go to the movies anymore. We're not going to have any more ice cream when we go out. We're not going to get candy. I'm not going to go to the mall and buy you things. You guys don't appreciate anything. You will see how hard it is to have nothing, right? And then the very next day, I took them to the mall, and I bought some stuff for them, right? And my wife looks at me and she goes, I really thought after that lecture you were going to like hold through. And I was like, but I love them. They're my kids, right? I forgive them. They heard the message. That's an example of an easy situation to forgive, right? Another situation that we can all relate to and in the workplace. This actually happened this week. Uh, you know, you have the refrigerator at work and you put your lunch in there and some people write their name on it because you don't want somebody else to take it. But it always seems to be somebody takes it, Right? So in our office, my brother Scott, he actually started working for us in uh, February. And so uh, Nicole had bought like a bunch of like string cheeses. And so he was hungry one day. He didn't bring his lunch in yet. And he went in there and he took one of Nicole's string cheeses. And he confessed it at the weekly meeting this week because Scott loves all types of cheese except for one specific type. And he opened it up thinking it was mozzarella, and he took a bite out of it, and he started gagging. Goes, it's Swiss cheese. I hate Swiss cheese. 
To which we all started laughing and we're like, it serves you. you know, and Nicole goes, I forgive you because you stole my Swiss cheese, but this story made it worthwhile. So, you know, there's easy things that we can forgive. Those are situations that come along regularly in our lives. I just wanted to give you that example. But what about the more difficult situations? The real stuff, right? The, the Ten Commandments type stuff. Like murder, cheating, stealing, lying. Those are harder things to forgive. I always think about the movie Troy. Did anybody see the movie Troy? Right, many years ago, uh, Brad Pitt was in it, a bunch of other people. Brad Pitt played Achilles, and there's this one scene that was very, very powerful, yet very underrated. And it's when the king of Troy comes to Achilles, who took his son Hector and killed his son, and he kept his body and said, Hector will not get a proper burial. And the king sneaks his way to Achilles, he goes to him, he kisses his hand, and he goes, I have endured what no person has ever endured, kissing the very hands of the person who killed my son. Please give me my son so that I can bury him, right? He's asking for forgiveness. He's asking to let it go. And Achilles, in the moment, in the movie, is, is like, whoa. And then he even says to him at the end of that scene, here's your son. We're going to honor the seven days mourning period and everything else. And he tells him that you are a far greater king than the king that represents the army that I'm fighting for. Now, that's a movie, right? But let's bring it to real life. How many times have we seen shootings in America? How many times have we seen people be, be killed and then they're on trial? And in the courtroom, you will see victims' families, not often, but sometimes it does happen. And when it's sentencing, the person's guilty and it's sentencing, a lot of times family members will get up and they will say, I forgive you. You killed my brother, but I forgive you. You killed my daughter, but I forgive you. Because that's what Christ tells us to do. Now, in this part right here, and it's very powerful to pray for those who curse you. Why, why do we pray for them? Well, ultimately, who does vengeance belong to? Because it's, it's, when people wrong us, we want to get vengeance. We want justice, right? But who does vengeance belong to? Beloved, never avenge yourselves, this is Paul's words, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Wrath of God. What is the wrath of God? Death, destruction, hellfire, brimstone, all the, the bad stuff that's happening. Now, I want people to just think for a moment here with this. If my brother were murdered by somebody, and I know this is deep, but you're here on July 2nd, July 9th, right? You guys know what I'm talking about here. My brother was murdered, and it's resurrection day. I'm going to see my brother again. I'm going to be in glory. I'm going to be in paradise. I'm going to be in the creator's presence for all eternity. The person who killed him, if they didn't know Jesus, what's their eternity? Do I really wish that on anybody? No. No real Christian would. When you look at the people, Paul, who wrote this, Paul put Christians to death before he found the Lord, right? He received the forgiveness. He blamed himself for the rest of his life. He says throughout scriptures, I'm the king of sinners. I'm the king of sinners. And he's right. But he spread Christianity further than any other person in those early days of the Christian church. That's why we pray. We pray that they come to know Jesus. We pray that they come to know Christ. We pray that they change their ways before it's too late. Forgiving other people, right? Right? I got a story to share with you. I posted a video on Facebook about a week and a half ago. And it was, it was interesting because it was a rap video. And it wasn't like your traditional rap video. It was just some person who's a follower of Christ who is basically rapping about all of the crazy things he sees in the world. And it's not like your traditional video. He's just, it's just a picture of like 
uh, what he sees out the car of his window just sitting in a parking lot and it's raining. But throughout the rap, it talks about all these things that are happening in the world. And at the end of it, he says, someone needs to get on their knees and someone needs to ask God for forgiveness and come back and rule this world because everything that's going on is crazy, right? And so one of my friends, Sherry, she had commented on it because it, she loved it. But then she said to her, I just had someone tell me that God doesn't exist because kids get cancer and die. And that churches, they steal money from people. And it's so sad how some people believe. And my response to her, knowing this and knowing what Christ said to do, right, pray for them. I said, Sherry, pray for that person to come to know God. Anyone who is a true believer knows that all the corruption and misfortune in this world is because of the prince of darkness. He rules this place. He kills the children. He causes the sin. He caused original sin. He makes the misfortune happen, and then he laughs twice when people blame it on God because he's the one who's doing it. Original sin. We were meant to live forever in paradise, but he tempted us and brought all of this upon us. But God, in his perfect ways, gave us a second chance at perfection. Because remember, those Beatitudes, they're impossible for us, right? They're impossible for us to do. But God gave us a second chance at being perfect through his son. All we have to do is trust in him and his promise during this life. About 80 years for all of eternity. Now, that's the first part of it. That's an awesome ringtone. <laughs> it's okay. I'm a professional. I deal with this all the time. It's good. As I'm saying with this, right, moving forward, what does Christ tell us to do? And he doesn't suggest that we do this. That first line right there, he commands it. He commands that we love one another as he loved us. And look at verse 13. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. Now, with forgiveness comes a second part of the forgiveness. Because every single one of us in this room, we know that we're guilty at times. And sometimes we confess our sins to the person who we wronged, right? But then sometimes we hold that grudge or regret against ourselves. And we can't forgive ourselves. We may have been forgiven by the other party, but I can't forgive myself for what I have done. This is where I want you to remember that Christ died for that. You kill someone. He died for that. You cheat on someone. He died for that. You steal from someone. He died for that. You slander someone. He died for that. And not only as the, as the, as the perfect example of true mercy, true grace, as our sins literally held him to the cross as they are crucifying him. Who is he thinking of? Luke chapter 23 says, Father, forgive them, not just the very people standing there who are actually doing it, but all of us because it's our sins that he died for. Forgive them for they know not what they do. And that's the example. And later on in the book of Acts, the very first Christian martyr, St. Stephen, a lot of you know who that is, his last words as they are stoning him to death, Paul, who was Saul at the time, leading the crowd of stoning St. Stephen, right, falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. That is true faith. That is living courageously. Now, I don't want any of us to go through that. I pray for that for myself all the time. I don't ever want to go through that. But if Stephen can forgive on his deathbed, if my Lord, who took all this for me, can do this on, my death, on his deathbed, I can forgive other people. I can let the grudge go, and I can let go of the regrets that I have. Right? Because I've been set free from it. Forgiveness, living courageously, moving 
forward, right? The Facebook story, part two. After that, she had replied to me, and she goes, Steve, I did tell that person that Jesus is the only way to heaven, and I also prayed for them. I'll never understand why people blame God for the bad things that happen instead of placing the blame where it belongs. And I responded to her, Sherry, it's because people really do not know. This is why it's called the truth and the good news. Why do we pray for them? Because they don't know. And we pray for understanding on our part because we know that we are much further in our spiritual journey than they are. At times, we may have been the person who was the transgressor, right? Looking for the forgiveness. And then I said that as uh, we are much further in our spiritual journey than they are. And I said, we know the truth. And then this is the quote that I put here. If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. If you've ever been punished, if you've ever been put on probation at work, if you've ever experienced a period where you felt serving a sentence, how does it feel when that sentence is lifted? Freedom. Ah, oh, I'm off of probation. Ah, oh, the punishment is over, right? I know, kids, when you get your cell phones back, right? It's like, yes, thank you, Father. You are a great Father. We love you. Do, 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 do. And I won't talk to you for two days, right? But I know how that is, Right? That's that freedom. You've been set free. And that's what Christ wants. He wants us to forgive one another. He wants us to forgive ourselves. Because ultimately, he forgave every single one of us. Live boldly. Live confidently. Do your best to follow what he tells us to. Don't worry about your shortcomings. Christ died for that. And I look forward to the resurrection day because everybody's got different visions of what that's going to be like when you get to meet Christ. But I know there's going to be a moment after I hug him, he's going to ask me, so Steve, what'd you do with your life? And I cannot wait to share it with him because I've been set free. Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty, I want to thank you so much for Jesus. Without him, we don't stand a chance. But because of him, we are perfect in your eyes. You hear our prayers. Help us to have a forgiving heart. Help us to remember that we are not perfect. Help us to let go of any grudges that we are holding or any regrets that we are holding against ourselves. Let us walk forever in the light and in the love of Jesus. In his holy name I pray, amen.